In this video, we'll cover forensic imaging and cloning using the TD4. Forensic imaging is also known as disk to file imaging. This produces a series of compressed files that are required by the forensic software application being used. Before imaging, remember to check or set the various imaging parameters. These are accessed through settings on the TD4 system navigation screen. This menu allows you to preset the type of hashing, imaging file types, output file sizes, error recovery strategies, and more. Or I can simply instruct TD4 to prompt me when imaging jobs are started. Be sure to check out the video on TD4 settings for more information. Once the imaging parameters are set, it's easy to start an imaging job. By design, TD4 will image one connected and recognized source drive at a time. If more than one device is connected and recognized, TD4 will not permit imaging to begin. On the destination side, up to five devices can be connected simultaneously. This allows multiple forensic images of a single source drive to be made. With two source drives connected and recognized, TD4 will not allow forensic imaging to start. Note that the Start button is not available. Selecting the second drive details, then ejecting it will clear up this condition. Now we start imaging. Tap Start to begin imaging. Notice that the detailed drive information can be accessed without impacting the active imaging job, and you can always get back to the drive status screen. In certain situations, it may be necessary to pause an active imaging job, then resume it at a different time or location. TD4 supports pause and resume. We'll start a new imaging job to demonstrate this. The pause button is visible on the imaging status screen. Tap this to temporarily stop the active imaging process. Note that status change from active to pause. To resume this job, tap the play button. TD4 resumes imaging at the same percent complete as when it was paused. TD4 supports pause and resume even when the drives have been disconnected. To do this, you will need to reconnect the same drives. Then find the pause job in the job status list. This feature could be quite useful when an imaging job started in one location must be completed in another. You'll see and hear when the imaging completes successfully. Exiting the status screen to the TD4 main menu, we can browse the output now on the destination drive. Open the folder containing the images. We see a series of EO1 files along with log information. These would now be available for investigative work to begin. TD4 supports cloning source drives. Cloning, also known as disk-to-disk -disk imaging, produces a forensically sound copy of the suspect drive. Here, we'll clone a source SATA device to a destination SATA device. TD4 defaults to producing a clone when a storage device without a file system is connected to a destination port. Tap Start to begin the duplication. We'll let this complete, then take a look at the job details and destination drive contents. The destination drive is a clone of the source drive. Please note that for this demonstration, we intentionally did not reduce the destination size drive while applying a DCO. 
TD4 supports imaging or cloning a single suspect drive to up to five different destination drives. This demonstration shows how easy it is to make two copies of a suspect drive. Here, we have one SATA solid-state device connected to TD4's right block port and two SATA devices connected to the destination ports. As you can see, TD4 recognized the one input and two output SATA devices. For this demo, we'll keep all the previous settings the same and kick off a forensic image. Scroll down to the job status screen to access drive details as needed. Looking at the two output drives, see that TD4 image folders are there with the same timestamp and files. Whether you need to clone or image, making multiple copies is simple with TD4.